would you compare owning a salon to being like a freelancer? Okay, here's a book. If you ever want to open your own salon, here's a book I need you guys to read. Now this book is going to tell you why us as hairdressers are so challenged as owners. Okay, it's not for everybody because you know what I do? I, I want to keep it simple. All I do is hair. I'm amazing at it. That's what I love. Build so many relationships from it and change the world in, in my life. <coughs> me as an owner, oh my god. I thought. I thought to myself, me being a hairdresser, I have great music, I can dress how I want if I own my own place. Boom. But I didn't realize this cost me a hundred grand cash and then three other business partners now that I gotta deal with. Okay? So I open up this amazing salon, but then do you think I can listen to the music I want to listen to? No. Who do, who's, who listens to the music? The hairdressers? Hell no, it's the clients, right? Okay. Now, me being a hairdresser, I can cut your bangs, I can show up to work like expressing myself and buying what I need. Do you think as the owner I can do the same thing? No, now I got clients and hairdressers I gotta bend over backwards for. Let's get that? Okay, now, me being a hairdresser, you think 12 hours of my day I'm gonna be doing hair? No, two hours of my day I'm doing hair. Now I'm doing permitting, I'm doing hiring, I'm doing taxes, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So you got to realize, you thinking you're going to open a salon, read the e -myth because what happens is the reality is, once you've established your hair thing, you want an entrepreneur right now, an expert, you know, an enterprise on it, you should get somebody that actually works that for you. That's what I did. I got business partners that are actually hairdressers also because they understood the industry. And then they were actually business people in management at the same time. So now I got a manager and I got somebody to do the finances. Because I'm not doing the finances. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because you don't want me. I don't even do my own taxes. I'd rather do my, my, <coughs> uh, my, uh, my accountant's hair and charge them $300. And then you can do my taxes and charge me $3,000 if you save me $30,000. Does that make sense? Yeah. So pay the people that you can for the top of the crop of the fruit. You want the lowest hanging fruit. You want the fruit up here. And that's what we're doing up here. Is we're, we're patronizing other people that are just specialty. The hairdresser, tax guy, manager, you know, whatever. Celebrity. Because a celebrity doesn't even do their own hair. They don't even know how. It's ridiculous. They got me doing it for three hours. You know what I mean? So... You gotta realize, in the world where it's specialty and you get paid the most, you're doing what you love, and everybody else is doing that what they love to it, whether it be administrative, management, whatever. Work that out. How did you get into hair? Um, well, because again, when I was in, when I was, when I got caught and I was going through that case, my youth counselor at church was a barber. Oh. So then, what happened? Built a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then he introduced me to this person. Turned out to say, now I went to school. What kind of conversation do you find is most successful to have with your client? Just to kind of listen or be a big personality? First listen and then be your personality. First listen, who is she, what's she doing? And then in that be the personality. Because you got to think, some people never will travel or see the world, but the world will come to you. So what some people in the relationship, the relationship that they build with you is based on, hey, where'd you go now? And I was like, first, how was your daughter's recital? Because I remember the last time you were there, because I listened. Then when it's all about, when, when it was all about them, and they feel like at that point, I have this epiphany that says, okay, now let me put my equity on it so that when I hand them that $300 bill, I'm not running, ducking behind the front desk. You see what I mean? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. That's to listen more and talk less. Ooh, that's good. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you see what I mean? So yeah, so the personality thing is just because that's part of your growth. Don't try to be it. Because that's so shallow when the rain hits, 
storms come, what happens to the shallow ground person? There's no more personality. Oh, I was stressed, and then here comes the drama. My boyfriend, nah, 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 and he's cuter than me. He's in the mirror more than I am. You know, whatever it is, I'm just saying. So then don't be this person. That's the personality person. You still got to bring it, but be more interested, not interesting looking. Does that make sense? I just say that because it puts you in perspective as a creative person. Well, maybe you should go for this, or do you Everything. If, if I brought my, my, because I build Harleys and 4x4s four and so if I brought my motorcycle to you, and all you do is clean houses, what are you going to do with one? You know what I mean? You'll clean my Harley, right? But whatever. But how far does that go when it doesn't work? So you got to realize, they're coming to you. The reason people would pay for a lot of money is for your suggestion and for your direction. Mm -hmm. 